let's go over a really interesting muscle. This is the extensor digitorum brevis. This muscle is involved in dorsiflexion of toes one through four. Let's just go over the anatomy, the origin and insertion. So if we look at where the insertion is, it's on the anterior superior lateral aspect of the calcaneus. Now, it comes down and basically inserts and divides into four sections here, or four bodies, onto the first toe there, the proximal phalanx of part one. Then it inserts into the other toes, basically two through four, and it goes into the tendons of the extensor digitorum longus. Really interesting muscle. So let's just go over the actions one more time of the extensor digitorum brevis. If we take a look at Mickey's feet here, We'll see where we taped up the muscle on the right foot, but let's just do the action of the left foot. Now, if we look at that, as we're showing here, it basically attaches right into toes one through four. So if we look at dorsiflexion of the toes, primarily at the proximal phalanx, we'll see the foot comes out. Okay, we can just bring that up. And you'll see that the fifth toe actually follows up with that. Just go up and down here a few times if you can. It's kind of a hard muscle to isolate there. But uh, yeah, you're doing great there, good. Now, what's really interesting about this particular muscle, bring your toes down there, there's another muscle that comes up from the shin here, and that's the extensor digitorum longus. And basically, we have the extensor digitorum brevis, it reinforces the extensor digitorum longus. So we start to understand some of these kinetic chain relationships. So now let's go over some of the middle intrinsic muscles of the foot. These are going to be called the dorsal and plantar interossei. On the bottom of the foot here, these green strands here, three of them, represent the three plantar interossei. Basically what they do is they connect, let me take my hand off of here for a sec, connect between the metatarsals of the foot. And as we see where they can attach up into here, approximately they insert into the base of the proximal phalanges. Now, on the plantar aspect, there's three of them. If we go to the dorsal side, maybe you should just start bending in there so people can see. Bring that right down here. Okay, good. We have four on the dorsal aspect. And again, these are occupying the space between the metatarsals, these bones here. Now, they also insert into the base of the proximal phalanges. Now, these muscles, which are really, really deep in the middle, are primarily involved in plantar flexion but they're also involved in forward propulsion. So even though they're very deep and they help to assist other muscles, they're still really important. So let's make sure we understand the actions of the interosseous muscles. Primarily plantar flexion at the proximal phalanges. So just bring your foot up here a little bit, Mickey, and we just kind of bend it in here. And this is gonna help you with forward propulsion. What's also interesting is this particular muscles, the interossei, the dorsal and the plantar interossei, help you to spread apart the toes. Yeah, this is not an easy one to do. And then bring them back together. So it helps with those two actions, spreading the toes apart and putting them back together. Now, if we start to look at this muscle, there's a really interesting kinetic chain relationship. The interosseous muscles are covered by the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus. And the tendons of this flexor digitorum longus, which comes down the back of the leg, actually attaches at the hind foot into the interosseous muscle. Really quite interesting. The next muscle I want to talk about is called the lumbricals. Now, this muscle basically just helps to fine tune different actions of the toes. Now, there's four of these very small muscles, and this is at the second layer within the foot. And it's kind of an interesting one because its origin and insertion are actually into the tendons of another muscle called the flexor digitorum longus. So basically we have other muscles deep to here, but we get part way up and it basically inserts into that tendon at one point and then wraps around and inserts at another point. But as I mentioned, the primary action is more of a fine tuning action for the other actions of the toes and the foot. Okay, let's go over a muscle called the quadratus plantae, a really interesting muscle. It is represented here in the purple section. Now, this muscle attaches down to the calcaneus, comes up, and its insertion is into the tendons of another muscle called the flexor digitorum longus. Now, what's really interesting about this is this actually, if we didn't have this muscle here, the foot would kind of be over in a, a position at the side here. 
But when this muscle contracts, the quadratus plantae, it straightens out the foot. It actually changes the axis of alignment. Now, if we actually pull this down here, the foot comes into a neutral position. So we see how important this one little muscle is here in terms of the entire foot stability. The next muscle we're going to go over is called the flexor digitorum brevis. It's quite an interesting superficial muscle in the first layer of the foot. This muscle originates at the calcaneus, at the posterior lateral tubercle of the calcaneus, and then it goes up and divides into four sections and goes into phalanges two through five at the mid phalanges. Now, it's quite an interesting muscle in one way is that each tendon as it goes up here is actually perforated to allow the passage of the tendons of the flexor digitorum longus. So let's go over the action of the flexor digitorum brevis. Uh, basically the action is plantar flexion at the middle and proximal phalanges of toes two through five. Mickey, why don't you show that action just to see what that is. There we go. Very good. Back out again. Perform the action one more time. And back. Now we'll be discussing the medial intrinsic muscles of the foot. We'll be describing three specific muscles, starting with the flexor hallucis brevis. Now we've outlined the origin of the flexor hallucis brevis on Mickey's foot here with the green color. The muscle runs up from the cuboid and the two lateral cuneiforms and inserts on the proximal phalanx of the first toe. And you can see the tendon splits on either side of the proximal phalanx. The primary action of the flexor hallucis brevis is plantar flexion of the proximal phalanx of the big toe. Just so you understand the primary action of the flexor hallucis brevis, we're going to have Mickey demonstrate. And so we'll have her uh, flex the big toe. And what it's doing is this muscle is plantar flexing the proximal phalanx of the big toe. And this is where the phalanx would be in this area here. Now we'll be discussing the second muscle, the adductor hallucis. The transverse layer originates at the metatarsophalangeal joints of the third, fourth, and fifth toes, while the oblique layer originates at the cuboid. Now both of these layers insert at the lateral base of the first proximal phalanx. Now just to make sure that you understand the motion, the primary function uh, of the adductor hallucis, uh, we're going to have Mickey demonstrate this because she does this quite well. And so the muscle is responsible for adduction of the first toe over the second there, as you can see. So that's adduction of the first toe, the big toe. Now, this muscle is important because it's often involved in creating hallux valgus, which is a, a malposition of that first toe over the second toe. And you can often see this in people who wear pointed uh, shoes. And Hallux valgus is the precursor to bunion formation. Now let's discuss the third muscle, the abductor hallucis, which is also the most superficial of the three muscles. Now the abductor hallucis originates off the medial tubercle of the calcaneus, and it inserts at the medial base of the first proximal phalanx. Now, just so you understand the action of the abductor hallucis, I'm going to help Mickey demonstrate. So the primary function is the abduction of the big toe, and that is moving the toe immediately like that. So we'll do this a few times. So this is abduction of the big toe. Now, another important function of this muscle is it also supports the medial arch of the foot, and it is also the oppositional muscle to the muscle we mentioned previously, the adductor hallucis valgus, which was uh, involved in hallux valgus, the precursor to the bunion formation. And so as you can see, the abductor hallucis pulls the toe in the opposite direction. So it is truly an oppositional muscle. Now we'll be discussing the lateral intrinsic muscles of the foot. We'll describe three muscles, starting with a deep intrinsic muscle the flexor digiti minimi brevis. Now this muscle originates at the base of the fifth metatarsal and it inserts at the base of the fifth proximal phalanx. 
The primary function of this muscle is plantar flexion of the little toe. I'm going to turn Mickey's foot slightly so you can see this motion. This would be plantar flexion of the little toe. Now the second muscle we'll discuss is the abductor digiti minimi. Now this muscle originates on the posterior inferior calcaneus and inserts on the lateral base of the proximal fifth phalanx. Now part of the function of this muscle is it supports the lateral arch of the foot but it also creates abduction and plantar flexion of the little toe. And I'll assist Mickey here in demonstrating. So this would be plantar flexion and bringing the toe outwards is abduction. So we're going to turn the foot slightly and we'll show abduction and plantar flexion. So abduction, plantar flexion. Now the third muscle we'll be discussing is the opponent's digiti minimi. Now this muscle originates off of the cuboid and inserts along the lateral uh, aspect of the fifth metatarsal. Its primary function is to orient the fifth metatarsal towards the other metatarsals. 